Testing. I think it's working. Welcome to Keith Hershaft's Midnight, Midnight Cartoon, Cartoon, Cartoon Program. Program. At 10 o'clock. I don't know what I'm going to draw, but uh, I'm going to start sketching See, see uh, see if anybody watches. Definitely need to uh, come up with something to fill the silence. Hello, hello. There are actually viewers here. They're watching what I'm doing. Make sure I don't mess it up. Needs more cowbell, says Vimal. I don't, uh, I don't have a cowbell, but feel free to send me one. Drew a mantis yesterday, or the other day, I can't remember. I'm going to do it again. not used to drawing at this angle uh, and also feel free to turn the sound off if you get sick of my voice
Okay. Warmed up a little bit. I'm going to try and draw something a little bit more, uh, a little bit more complex. But uh, if anybody has any any questions on uh, on drawing or anything like that, feel free to pop them in the uh, in the chat. I'd be happy to go off uh, go off topic a little bit, but. How about a deep sea diver? Could do that. Let's see. Let me scrap this one. Start with a thumbnail, kind of get an idea, so I'm not I'm not wandering all over the place. Like this, definitely start with a gesture when uh, I'm sketching, especially like the more complex the uh, character is. The, uh, the harder it is to get that uh, that sense of movement um, and life into uh, into a pose, but if you uh, if you get it when you start, if you have you have it to start with, then it's uh, it's just a matter of making sure you don't cover it up with a bunch of deadlines. That's deadlines, as in lines that don't feel alive, not deadlines, as in. Uh, having to get something done on time for uh, for any linguists out there watching uh, watching me draw on a Friday night. When I'm working on the gesture, um, mostly thinking about uh, what's happening in the in the pose, you know, what's happening in the scene, trying to get an idea of um, just a sense of of, uh, of believable movement and uh, uh, placement, so I can I can start getting an idea of where things are going to sit in the composition. And also the silhouette. Um, so even if I was to black the entire figure out, you could uh, hopefully still tell what was going on.
most of these lines uh, are just sort of for me so I know where everything you know where to where to place the uh, major parts of the the, the uh, anatomy and the character and this is the stage to be as sloppy as you want to be because you can you can take all these lines out later you know in the next pass so after I'm done with this this stage I'll uh, start a new layer I'll drop the opacity on this one and then uh, um, draw over it almost like I was inking that hand to be doing something a little bit more interesting watch on there so she knows uh, how much air she's got left try to come up with some just interesting shapes to, uh, to draw the eye in having the hair go up like that suggests that there's you know either she's falling or there's no gravity or uh, you know diminished gravity underwater I guess so somebody just asked let's see this is mind size just asked when I'm uh, when I'm working do I have a vision of the finished image or uh, is it more about exploration um, I have a tendency to um, have a rough idea of what I'm doing and then uh, once I start putting lines down on the paper and I don't have to think about them anymore um, I can kind of start moving on to the next part so it's sort of uh, I try to do as much thinking on the on the page as I can um, I don't, uh, I don't know, I like to be able to shift things around as I go to, um, you know, find something that, you know, maybe it suits the, suits the pose or suits the story better. What's happening here? I think this 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 gag is a little uh, a little cliche. But uh, uh maybe I'll be more clever on the next one. Octopus has uh, rectangular eyes. I don't want to offend all of my biology friends out there. Got everything sketched in. Gotta resize a few things, try to make it a little bit more interesting. 
since I can. It's really hard to get an expression to, uh, a human expression to work on an octopus, but, uh, but we'll get there. Blazing Sketchbook says, Hi, Mechanical Snow and friends. Hello, on behalf of me and my friends. I got the uh, basic, basic sketch down, basic gesture. So I created a new layer. Now I'm uh, drop the opacity on the on the the, uh, the gesture here, and I'll go in and I'll start tightening things up, trying to figure out the anatomy a little bit better and uh, try and refine it. Also, if I was uh, if I was doing this for for someone, I would probably um, you know maybe look up what scuba gear looks like. But I don't want to, so I'm going to draw it all out of my head. why everything I draw is set in a, uh, in a in a future where I can just make things up. I should mention though, when I'm making uh, making up designs for things like this, uh, I generally when I come across something, I try to make notes of what the actual thing looks like when I come across it. Oops. Um, so when I go to draw something, I have some uh, some vocabulary to some like visual vocabulary to pull from. Um, makes sketching a lot more uh, more fluid when you can get your idea down and then uh, refine the idea later if you have to. But right now I'm trying to think a little bit of the, uh, the perspective on the face, so that the uh, so that it feels like it's it's actually turning around in the uh, in the environment, and uh, giving the drawing a little bit of depth. And um, I also have a lot of little cartoon shorthand things that I do. Um, yeah, I draw eyes pretty much the same way most of the time if I'm, unless I'm doing something, uh, something that calls for, uh, for a different look. But, um, even if I was doing something more, uh, realistic, um, I would start the same way. Start with the gesture and kind of build up through that so you have uh, so you have like a lively foundation um, that's something that cartoons uh, do well oh 
I you can barely hear me. Is that better? I'm not saying anything uh, too valuable, though, so you're not missing out. like the hair try to find a way to make it look like it's going around all of the uh, all of the pieces that are holding it on to the character's face and think about what uh, which objects are in front of other objects so the mask is obscuring you know parts of the hair the hair is coming out from from under it so make sure you don't have lines overlapping in the wrong way or in two ways that don't make sense. It can really uh, flatten out a drawing. So, Lamal is asking, could I uh, go into more detail on the... Um, on the the shorthand that I use for for cartoons, uh, yeah. So like for the eyes, um, an eyeball, you know, it's obviously a ball, like a sphere. Yeah, you know, with a back, a front, it goes around. And uh, when I when I do it, I tend to try to simplify. You know, if if you were drawing, you know, an eye, and you had all the the different parts. Here. So you've got the, the brow, and that goes, that's inset there, you have uh, let's say drawing it a little bit more, more realistically than I usually do. So if you were to have that eye like this, and uh, and I wanted to simplify it. I mean, I already kind of simplified it on this one, but if you had like you know eyelashes, coming out, some big Eon Eon Flux uh, eyelashes there. Um, if I was to simplify it, you know, I'm going to try and pull the basic shape of the uh, of the eye, the major parts. So I have the uh, the top lid, and it's wrapping around the surface of the eye, of the eyeball. So it, um, the inside of this this piece of the uh, the upper eyelid is going to be rounded so that it fits cleanly to the shape. And then you would have you know, parts overlapping. So the uh, the corner of the eye, the uh, I'm sure somebody knows the uh, knows the name of of all these these parts of anatomy I'm just glazing over. Um, so if I, if, if I was going to simplify it like this, I tend to, to draw the eye as a circle and pull it around and then just, you know, for the female characters, that's my, that's my cheap trick right there. I'm sure somebody else did it long before I got to it, but um, I'm basically taking this part here and exaggerating it, almost like the, uh, I've seen some people just add a lot more, uh, emphasis to the, to the, uh, to where the eyelashes are. Um, you would also probably draw the eyelid, or the, uh, eyebrow a little bit more, uh, feminine, or traditionally feminine. Uh, but... Um, drawing a blank on what else to say. Blazing Sketchbook liked the fact that I just uh, owned up to using cheap tricks. Yes, my uh, entire style is just <laughs> is just cheap, cheap tricks. Um, 
but I try not to not to get like a perfect circle a lot of times. I'll uh, one of the other things I'll I'll do is I try to get like I try to take these these points of the shape and use those to make something uh, a bit more visually interesting. Um, it's easier to remember when you have the the shortcuts like or the shorthand. Um, you know, it's always good to practice drawing from life. But uh, if you're you know, developing a style or you like the look of something, you can always uh, you know, try to find ways to ways to pull that in and combine it with observation. Um, but yeah, those are some some eyes eyes there. But I do I do the same thing with you know I mean you know if you're just sketching something quick if you're doing I mean it would be great for storyboarding or something like that where you just have to uh, signify that there signal that there's like sh you know shine on an object you know you could you could draw a car you know through the car window and have you know all the seats have the uh, the dashboard the steering wheel the shifter you know the the windows on the inside over here you know the other seat you know kind of build the thing out like this but if you have to get the thing done yesterday you, know, you could also just try to you just take that that same windshield shape and create an interesting abstract shape across it and give it a little bit of texture to darken it in and uh, try to get the sense that it's it's reflecting light with high contrast so you have you have like a high contrast area here with with uh, or a, uh, a bright spot here with a dark spot there and it kind of fades gives like a sense that the um, you know that it's showing some of the the surrounding environment and since we we're all familiar to uh, with cartoons you know uh, you know looking through you know the funnies and stuff like that it's it kind of uh, it's it's sort of like a, like a symbol for the uh, the texture rather than uh, what the thing actually looks like um, so keep that in mind because uh, it can can easily look uh, pretty cliche if you're not careful um, Also, another thing I, I noticed uh, noticed a lot of time when people try go to draw hair is they 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 get so focused on the the texture of like individual hairs um, that they forget they forget about like you know the shape and when you see somebody you know from across the street or something you don't you don't notice each individual hair you're noticing you know like a a shape that makes up the silhouette of of the hair um, so I try to focus a lot on that and then also have spots where it interlocks so it you know it's as it as one piece comes through here have another piece like overlap you know like locking in behind it almost like that you know so you start to like build depth you know with different different shapes and it kind of uh, you know, builds up a um, something that has the has the uh, the sense that there's a back to it. You know, that it's actually taking up space in the scene. Insanely flatulent says, "Looking good, man. Thanks. Awesome name." I'm curious, uh, have you earned that name?
Revolution E4. Oh, cool. Thanks, man. It's always, uh... I had a feeling that most of the people who who found me on here are people who follow me other places already. And uh, several of them are possibly friends who I'm acting like they're strangers to make me seem more popular. But don't tell anybody. They have to watch from the first episode to find me out. Otherwise they get to be, uh, be disappointed later. But now as I'm uh, sketching out the, um, the parts of the, the scuba, scuba gear, I'm uh, just sort of going off what, you know, Partially what I remember, you know, you know, from from seeing, uh, you know, if you're in a surf shop or something and you're just kind of looking around, uh, or you know, you're near any place you know, has boats and you, you see stuff like that, you just kind of kind of make notes of of you know like how things connect. Um, so yeah, make a make like a fitting on here that attaches to a piece. Some of it's obscured by hair. But Bill just like kind of start marking in little little details that I can expand on a little bit, and uh, just start to think, you know, okay, so there's two hoses coming off, connects into a splitter. You'd have some kind of some kind of knob for like a regulator, like a yeah, so you can control how much uh, how much oxygen was flowing through. A little bit of texture and then when I'm drawing the hoses like that I usually start with one I try to think of them in, in, in sections and uh, try to keep them even to a degree so they so they feel like they're they're round so if you were to trace the the opening and you get that curve kind of try and picture that curve going all the way through yeah so it goes all the way around if you were to draw completely through the object. Yeah, you're thinking about the thinking about the surface on the front and the back. So if that was the opening. So that'll give you give you when you're doing your you know if you're looking for that shorthand that I mentioned before. Um, when you go in to add like a little bit of reflection on that, you know, just to kinda show you know like a little bit more um, of uh, you know surface texture or anything. It gives you something to to start with, so you can uh, kind of visualize how it how it wraps around the object, and then you know as it when it goes around a bend, you know it will be widening out a little bit, and you do the same thing, you can kind of build off the next part, but always thinking as that that object's turning in space, you know which way is that which way is the surface curving? If you drew a, a line around the object, is it curving? upward, downward, toward you, away from you, and uh, you can just start adding more details to the, to the parts, showing that there's there's some space in there, that light, uh, you know, light's not hitting every single part of it, and it adds more visual interest to the object. But when I go to, to do this, that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, so it's coming toward me, and then it starts to go away. It starts to go away from us. And I'm just thinking about the surface. And if it turns really straight away from you, the uh, the space between these lines gets closer. It's, uh, you know, you can, it's, you know, you usually think of perspective with buildings, things that are far apart and huge. Um, but, uh, but when you're doing things like faces, you know, with characters, um, props, objects like this, you definitely want to think about it there too, because um, getting it wrong can uh, flatten out your drawing when you don't want it to be flat. You know, there's there's styles that that work that way, but 
um, it's better to be better to be conscious of it and aware that you're doing it instead of just um, falling into like one of those little shorthand things that you know you really don't know how to draw anything outside of that um, the more you can learn about about that the better you you get at it the uh, the more options you'll have as far as your style as far as your your drawings go and uh, you'll be able to make things that are more interesting and um, go longer before somebody finds you out seems to be a big problem for me a big fear of mine and, uh, that's why I, I like to be able to draw in front of people so they're like ah he uses shortcuts and cheap little tricks but but he can do it on you know on cue so he can do it on demand that's the important part I think so drawing the hand um, I've sketched out loosely like where the uh, the major parts are going to be and what the pose is going to be so she's pointing um, again thinking in, pers in uh, perspective you have the main part of the palm here so that's kind of you know wrapping around pointing palms facing us a little bit you have the knuckle coming up and then you have the uh, like the, uh, the pad of the thumb here that connects in and uh, might foreshorten it a little bit so the so it's like coming at us but if you get the right angle you can still tell uh, tell where all the details are on the thumb so I try to break it down into the main sections going a little away from the, uh, the idea of foreshortening it I don't think it would look right if I did too much. Um, I point that a little bit more. Try to make it not look as uh, as bulky. So when I when I draw hands, I, I tend to try to come up like try to find that that shape that uh, that silhouette. Um, but if I were to break this down, you have the first knuckle and the second knuckle right there, and then the one that connects to the hand or to the palm. So you know as I bend the other fingers, pushing that a little bit more, drawing the ones in the back. And then, uh, kind of like you know, like a like kind of a loose, a loose pose. So she's not like clenching the, clenching the fingers. Just, just a little bit. So the last one I'll have, kind of hanging out. It's hard when you're doing uh, cartoons and then you you want to do something with a bit more detail, like you know the hands like that. And uh, yeah, sometimes it takes uh, takes some practice to get uh, to get to find that middle ground to where you can have the uh, you know have the those the detail for those silhouettes. Um, but also, uh, also keep it simple enough that it it works stylistically. You know, it's like stylistically consistent. Uh, so right here, start building the uh, the muscles of the arm. You know, and just trying to keep them keep them fluid. So I'm keeping an eye on that underdrawing. Yeah, you know, trying not to try not to lose any of the movement that I've gotten in there. You know, coming up with uh, trying to take some of the anatomy I've studied, you know, from you know figure drawing and all that, and try to just simplify it a bit 
so that it has those nice subtle curves in there. And uh, yeah, try not to put too much, try not to put too little. But also keeping an, an idea of, of overlapping forms so, so that uh, so there's no conflict when you look at it and you're like, yeah, something looks like, like there's something overlapping as the other thing's overlapping from behind it and it creates like some kind of either flat or impossible object. Uh, yeah, can uh, can really um, can flatten out your drawing, or can uh, can just really distract from uh, you know from what you want people to look at. So then, as I you know, like a lot of times when I'm when I'm sketching these out, I'll start with an oval, just an oval shape. Yeah, you know, and then pick a pick a side, and as it, you know, when I go to add on to it, start to favor one side and offset curves to create, you know, a, a more interesting, a more interesting shape like that, instead of, you know, just something here. So you know, you have like the nice. Uh, Geometric, uh, straight, yeah, you know, straight lines, opposing curved lines, here, and it just makes the uh, makes the silhouette more interesting. And then I think I'm going to redraw that. So if I do this. Just drop the opacity on it just to kind of get rid of some of these lines. Drop the opacity on the uh, the original layer that I was sketching on. Created a new layer. Uh, made some marks here to kind of indicate the uh, stuff I want to keep. And then when I pull the old one back in, I'll just erase what was under it. And fit everything back together, just to kind of and then again try to come up with a nice pose for the hand. So I'll start with the palm, just so I know it's where it's connected. Um, a lot of I I've, I saw something not too long ago where they were talking about uh, oh, merge those two layers. Um, I think it was a, it may have been a Disney animator. Uh, they were, they start with the, the hand when they have a pose. They, they draw the hand doing the action and then they connect the arm to it. So once you draw the torso, you draw the hands in. And it kind of gives you, uh, gives you a sense, like two, it gives you two, a start point and a finish point. And then all you have to do is, uh, is connect them. I do it sometimes, but, uh, not every time. I didn't do it here. So then I try to keep those, get those interesting shapes in there, and kind of just have an idea of where all the fingers are. And have them try, yeah, try to get them in an interesting pose where they're kind of, you know, some are overlapping others. I don't like that, so I'm going to just erase it. That's the thing with uh, with hands. I just I draw them over and over and over again until uh, until I find until I find one that I until I I hit on one that I like, and then uh, and go through and tighten it up. Another thing, one of my uh, one of my figure drawing teachers pointed out to me is uh, the fingers. You know, as you draw the fingers in, they kind of the ones over here point in 
you'll kind of curve in a little bit this way and that way. So as you draw the pinky, if it comes out, you know, kind of curves back in. Goes through, you know, and you have your, you know, so they're all kind of pointing in toward the same, the same play, you know, all toward like a, like one point. So if you were to grab a ball, the, uh, the shape is almost spherical. The, the empty space in between the fingers, you know, or in the palm that the fingers wrap around in, that the fingers follow. I usually try to think of that a little bit when I'm uh, working on placement. I think, let's start with the pinky this time. I'm just marking in the the uh, major uh, major landmarks here yeah, the knuckle you know where the whichever knuckle uh, is going to bend the most and just trying to keep the shapes interesting Pull the pinky up a little bit So that's looking a little bit better. I think I'm going to uh, create another layer and tighten it up on that layer and then uh, erase this version. And when I go through a drawing, this is pretty much the entire process. It's just, just try it until you come close. And then, uh, then once you hit on something good, just keep, uh, just keep following that unless you mess it up and if you mess it up you delete it and start again it says, uh, it's looking good thanks so I was kinda worried with that first one um, I wanted to do something a little bit more complex but yeah, as soon as that little red light comes on the camera you start uh, start getting a weird little vibration in your drawing hand and you know it's hard to hard to draw like the more complex complex characters so on here I'm just trying to keep uh, keep from adding too many lines uh, but the lines I do add I, I like to um, I want them to serve a purpose if I, and if I was drawing, uh, I mean, it's a scuba diver. I feel like scuba divers cover like everything up. So it's gonna be a glove. Uh, just put in little seams and stuff for that. And then uh, at the top of the the glove, I'm gonna follow that that shape that I I created before. You know, the those marks that I left here uh, for the surface. I'll leave those in. Or I'm going to use those to uh, to give myself a starting point while I figure out the um, you know how it wraps around. My fingers are looking off. Let's see. It needs to. That's the other thing. You just step away from it for a second. And then come back to it, and if it still looks good, move on. If it doesn't, try to figure out why it doesn't look right. Nah, kind of liking that. Oh no, did it? Java. Java wants to update. Is everybody still there? Looks like it's still working. Okay, everybody's still here.
You didn't shut my stream down this time, Java. I'm sure Java's useful. For something. Okay, so I'm gonna bring back the uh, resolution or the uh, the opacity on that, and then I'm gonna erase what I had under there. And then merge those two layers. I'll go back in and clean it up because now I don't have the underdrawing there and there's some of those little lines I like to keep I like to have that that little bit of spontaneous energy in the lines I'll just redraw a couple little parts and sometimes when uh, objects are close together like that you uh, can kind of drop the line out just so there's like a Real faint, just implied line. Makes it look a little bit, uh, a little interesting. Mm. This is, uh, insanely flatulent. Has a, uh, a good point. It says, uh, speaking of hands. Uh, writing teachers talk about um, going to the uh, let's see, focusing the, the hands and eyes. Yeah, if you get those wrong on anything, I mean, when when you're drawing, you're kind of acting a little bit because you know if you're if your drawing's not believable, then the performance isn't believable. So a lot of the same uh, same rules tend to apply if. Uh, if somebody, you know, that's why the, uh, the gesture is so important. Um, if you get that wrong, then, you know, your whole whole drawing, whole page, whole book is just going to look like uh, stiff acting. Um, you know, I feel like, I feel like that's the, I feel like that's the thing I see, I see the most. You know, when I'm, like, looking at other, other artists, and even when I, when I couldn't draw the way, you know, the way that I draw now, um, the, uh, I feel like I still had some of that, some of that movement and energy in it that kind of compensated for, like, the flaws in the way that I would draw, I would draw anatomy or, you know, something would flatten out a little bit. It still looked kind of like it was, it was alive and moving on the page, so it kind of lended, uh, lended a bit of believability that way, which, um, I'm glad I glad I had that going early on because uh or you know from back then you know from watching uh, a lot of animation uh, because I feel like that's the hardest thing to uh to learn it's like that's probably the hardest thing to like teach somebody how to pull into their drawing because it's the thing that you start with you know it's it's the thing that like you know you did to start every drawing and now yeah you've kind of you've kind of developed a bad habit and a part that you no longer have to think about oh, I'm still you know it's going through uh, trying to figure out the to figure out the surface of the uh, different parts of the of the character's anatomy as uh, as it turns around in space, and I'm also trying to like find uh, find shapes that are interesting. So you know, trying to like come up with uh, you know where to have uh, have a curve you know blow out real far, you know, and uh, you know what's opposing it on the other side. But I'm also thinking of, uh, you know, how the anatomy is, and um, 
you know, figure drawing is a great way to to build that up. You know, whether you're doing cartoons or if you're doing, uh, you know, more realistic, you know, naturalistic stuff. Um, having an understanding of where, you know, just like how joints move. You know, like like on here, you know, you have the knee. If the knee is pointing this way, then if you carry that down, that's the direction the foot's pretty much going to be pointing in. Uh, if you turn the foot too much this way, uh, a friend of mine who does jujitsu reminds me that if you turn the foot too far that way, the uh, the knee isn't going to be doing too well. So uh, definitely for natural poses, you want to uh, you want to try and have those little those little details in mind. So as you come down to the down to the lower part here, kind of block in the shapes for the foot. I don't think I can go into too much detail on Twitch. I'll, uh, I don't want to get flagged for, uh, for drawing feet here. But uh, just did that, uh, what I mentioned before, you know, I started with a with an oval kind of shape here, and then tried to pull like a nice long straight line for the front and have a nice. This isn't the uh, the biggest curve, but it's a uh, just a slight curve for the back as you have the the calf muscles going down into the uh, into the ankle, and then uh, make sure to keep it round. You know, I think think about the the shape so when you go to place the the parts of the foot um, yeah you have uh, you have a bit of the upper the lower leg overlapping the top so you get a nice sense of space like a nice sense of uh, sense of depth and then curve the curve the foot around like that so it should also be like uh, flippers on that. Let's see. Come up with a basic design for them. And try to keep the yeah. Uh, try to keep it on on screen. I'll probably lift the whole the whole image up to. Uh, you don't want to crop a foot in your image. The uh, asked uh, asked if the if the foot should be on the same plane, uh, facing like the toes should face in the same direction as the knee. So if the knee is pointing this way, then the foot would be pointing that way. If you wanted the foot pointed over here. You know, and the toes pointed out that way. That movement's going to come from the upper hip. So that's you know, it's it's not going to. You're not really going to have that much rotation in the uh, in the ankle. Yeah, think of the ankle as like a like a joint that you know, it's for for like up and down movement. Very little side to side. You can get a little bit of little bit of movement, but um, not a ton. And if you have the uh, if you have the foot. Pointing too far out from where the knee is, it kind of looks like the kind of looks like the uh, the bone's broken. I was uh, guilty of doing that a lot before uh, before uh, when my uh, sequential teachers uh, pointed that one out to me. Just kind of. Just kind of point the uh, point the feet in whatever direction I wanted. I was a rebel. I was reckless and young. I've reformed though. <laughs>
blazing sketchbook says guilty as charged yeah it's, it's uh, having to redraw an entire leg because you want the foot placement to be different is just uh, it's tedious but it pays off I'm going to raise this whole thing up, so I'm going to merge these two layers here. If anybody uses uh, uses Procreate, this is this is useful. If you merge two layers and select the uh, the group, then you can move your underdrawing, your colors, and your line work, and all everything that's in that group together. So it's real nice when you're doing like you know, you're trying to get placement right you know and you're trying to adjust a composition so now I don't uh, oops did all those adjustments and uh, and left an arrow on the knee underwater it's probably a harpoon let's see so, try to come up with an interesting shape for the uh, the flippers come down that so what I want with this shape now I'm thinking of uh, thinking about the composition a little bit um, and I'm thinking about how this thing's built uh, okay, you have like these structures here that that help add a little bit of vertical support to the shape of the foot's coming through there you have the uh, yeah, so you have the sides here. Those are coming up. And uh, what I'm doing with the with this with this design is as the as the eye comes down here, you know, as you lead the viewer's eye through the page, this is kind of acting as an arrow to push the to push the eye back up into the image. If I had uh, if I had done it like I did before, where I had this whole thing cropped, your eye goes down and it meets that 90 degree. Where the line, uh, you know, you know, the, the uh, border clips the clips the line, and you just kind of, as a viewer, your eye just kind of sits on it, you know, and it's it just doesn't, uh, you know, you don't want to, um, you don't want to have the viewer's eye stopping too often, unless that's your intention. I mean, I'm sure there's a a use for it, but. I don't want that in this one. And then also, the uh, I'm suggesting there are legs coming down like that. So there's a secondary action here if you're uh, into animation. So there'll be a secondary action from this part here since it's the movement, and the force is coming through on the bottom of the foot. And the uh, this part here that has some flexibility is being uh, is encountering some drag. Uh, from the the weight of the water, so it's, you know the water takes a second to get out of the way from the big flat surface like that. So it kind of, as it's going down, it drags up. If it's coming up, yeah, you, know, you would do the opposite. So I uh, try to add a little bit of that in there, and it helps give a give a sense of movement. And don't forget, this one's behind it. So try to figure out how much of that you would actually see and. And this part is just this little bit. But if you don't put that there, you know, if uh, if you don't put all that detail in, sometimes it can uh, can make it look like it's it's been cut off. You know, and, uh, the foot slides in there, so you have this little overlap around where the lip is it shows shows some thickness to the uh, to the shape so if you have a line going in like that if you have an object like this and it's going into another shape you have that and then you have the thickness of the other shape that wraps around it you know, because this this piece here has to accommodate all the detail that's in or all the the object that's in the other piece or that this piece has to accommodate all the mass 
of the, the part that's, uh, that's inserted. Hey, Keith. Hey, what's going on? There are actually, there are actually people watching. I thought it was going to be me sitting in a room just talking to the internet. But, uh, I figure not everybody can make it to every one of these that I do. I'm going to do them at a few different times just to kind of see, see when there's an audience for it. Um, but I'll be, uh, I'll be posting, uh, be posting all the videos to, uh, to YouTube afterward. So, you know, maybe the next, maybe that night or the, uh, the next day. I don't know, they, they're probably going to be some pretty large files, so uh, i have to do it when, uh, when I'm not doing anything else on the, uh, on the computer. Something about video. So I got, I have the basic shapes, and then, uh, yeah, you want to make sure you have, um, you know, like, unless the uh, costume is painted on the character, you want to show some folds, too. So as the, as the leg comes, you know, as the, uh, the knee bends right here at the joint, you have parts where the, uh, the fabric bunches up. Yeah, you know, around both sides. And kind of start to suggest that there's, uh, there's a roundness. You know, as it comes down, it goes out, and then, you know, so the, uh, the shapes round all the way. Gives a nice sense of uh, nice sense of volume to the to the character. And keep erasing it and redrawing it if you have to. But I could call, you know, always come back and uh, I drop the opacity on this one and go over it again. Um, try to try to get even cleaner line work um, where you go in and, and erase it too you know just erase the uh, you know all the guidelines you want or the, all the all the guidelines you don't need uh, try to add oh wait I had a glove on the other hand it would make sense if there was one on this hand I'm trying to uh, you know when you come up with a character too you know um, before you go in and you start drawing a comic with them, um, draw them in a bunch of scenes first. You know, draw like little little one-shot gags and stuff like that, and just get like uh, get a sense for how they move. And you know, each time you do it, you'll you'll commit more details to memory, and uh, so that way you won't have to have a picture of the of your character design next to you for the entire thing. Yeah, you can kind of kind of sketch a lot of parts out of, you know, a lot of parts naturally. You know. Another little cartoon shortcut here. It's just coming up with, uh, you know, kind of plain breaks where the, the hair turns in space. So as it comes around here, this part's starting to turn, starting to turn in. So I have the, uh, I have light hitting this surface, hitting that plane. And I have shadow cast over here, so it just gives a gives a little bit of depth to the depth to the drawing. And if you think through it that way, you can um, you can keep your drawings more consistent. And uh, the more consistent they are, the more uh, believable they are. And just keep working through, trying to find you know where. I could put little bits of, uh, you know, signal where the fabric is. I have a tendency also to put seams in. And it doesn't always, uh, people don't always do that, but I, I like to take any excuse to put lines across the surface of a, of a character to give more of a, uh, more of an idea of um, of the the volume. 
you know, of the object and the object of the character and uh, kind of give a little bit more surface information, especially if, because uh, I like to just drop flat colors in on my characters. So if I can, if I can use line to convey some of the, uh, some of the volume, then, um, then I don't have to do it with, uh, with rendering, with shading and all that stuff. And if you do add rendering and you do add shading and you've already put in some of this info, then, uh, it makes your job a little easier. You've already done a lot of the thinking. So now, like, uh, I, don't know, I feel like there would be, like, some designs or something on, uh, on some kind of... Uh, you know what I forgot? She's scuba diving. I roughed them in. But I forgot the scuba tanks. This is how people die. You know? forget to uh, forget to draw their scuba tanks and they just they just drown and then I have blood on my hands as you go and you uh, add more detail in here yeah you might have to go back and adjust some other stuff too just to kind of make everything fit and, uh, all these greebles yeah, uh, it was George Lucas. The uh, all the little bits of stuff that you add on to an object to make it look uh, science fiction, science fiction like. Make it look like it's it's being used for something. You know, when you look inside of uh, like a picture of a of a jet cockpit, you don't. Uh, you know, you don't notice. You know, you, you see all the uh, all the different uh, pieces of detail, but you know, you don't have to know what they uh, what they do. But if you looked inside of a inside of a cockpit and you didn't see any of that in there, it would look wrong. So you know, you have to have you have to have some kind of uh, some kind of details in there. You know, you're not going to. You know, obviously, like a scuba diver would look at this and say, like, this guy doesn't know anything about scuba diving. That's not what a scuba tank looks like, you know. But I, uh, you know, no no offense to scuba divers, but I don't draw comics for scuba divers. Uh, but that's a good that's a good uh, good reason to use reference, though. Makes it easier for you know if if you need it, you know, it makes it easier to. Uh, To get the uh, to get the details right, kind of gives you ideas when you don't have them. And uh, I used to be uh, very against using reference because I didn't want it to, uh, you know, make you know, because uh, it's hard to it's hard to look at a thing and do the gesture all the time. So I felt like you know my drawings came out a lot more stiff when I when I had a picture next to me. But uh, learning to use reference is a skill. A skill in its own, in itself. So, um, but definitely, definitely worth uh, worth doing if you, you know, if you need to look up what something looks like. A little knife in there. A little details on it. in here just to kind of thicken up the fabric a little bit get rid of the lines I don't need get that little bend in the foot there I'm starting to get a headache from these uh, these headphones Suffer for your art, you know. Cool 
so I think that's enough on uh, the scuba diver for now. Let me get this little guy drawn in. A lot of times with heads, I'll start with a start with a circle. Um, just kind of gets me put something on the page so that you don't you're not staring at a blank page. You have a place to start, and now you can kind of have that nucleation point to build everything else out from. Um, but it also kind of gives you an idea that you know you're you're drawing something that exists in space. So you know whatever you're starting with, as long as you can visualize a sphere, you can start to visualize the surface of it and uh, how objects will uh, will kind of turn in space. I'll come up with a interesting shape for the for the head there. So it kind of break got like a little, nice little sharp sharp edge since I have this long straight line coming in here. Get this little little wedge kind of shape to make it interesting. And then uh, Octopus has these weird little vents. And these are all, you know, if you're at the aquarium, you just, you know, you stand there and you stare at an octopus for uh, for long enough and you just notice these little little parts. So when you go to go to sketch one, yeah, you kind of know what, uh, what the basic shapes are to kind of block in or if you know you take a sketchbook with you you know you sketch it once and you know you kind of you, know, you make little notes to yourself of uh, you know the things things that you wouldn't you wouldn't normally recognize you know everybody knows they've got eight eight tentacles but um, you know what kind of textures on the back of the you know the back of this like this like weird bulbous shape here. Um, yeah, so you kind of have like a. It's like it's almost like a, like a fringe kind of thing that tapers off. Yeah, but it kind of gives uh, gives a little bit of visual interest to the shape, to the silhouette, and kind of makes it uh, makes it a different texture than the rest of the environment. So as you kind of you know, place those along the surface, add some little lines in there to kind of break up the big white spaces. And then you know, as you do that, as you add parts to it, you know, find a way to lock them in to the other form so that you have one shape passing into the uh, passing you know in front of or behind the other. And then as you come down, you know, have like uh, find an interesting way to to close it off. So I like having this, yeah, you know, the same way you would contrast like a like a long straight kind of line and a curved line. You can also do like a thick to thin here. So I have like this thicker shape here, and if I thin it out right here, you know, and then it kind of widens again. This shape. Yeah, not only does it like, you know, is it like a visually appealing kind of silhouette like that, um, but it also makes it feel like there's weight on the ends of the uh, of the tentacles, so it starts to feel like there's uh, like even though they're underwater, it's you know there's there's still gravity pulling pulling on the object, and it makes it feel like it's. Uh, like it's something that's real, you know, it's something that actually exists in its environment. Yeah, just keep thinking about how to add these these different shapes in. And you don't have to show all eight, but yeah, you kind of have to suggest that uh, that the figure is round in its environment, you know, and it and they exist behind the other ones. Pull that out, avoid a tangent right there. That's as good as behind. 
behind and then that's definitely coming out. So there's no question for the viewer of which, which object is in front, which object's behind. I just keep adding those weird little shapes in there. So now that there's four on one side, you can kind of assume there's four on the other. So if I just add a shape like that, you know, and make sure it's behind. And there's the fifth one. There's six. You know, and each one that I add, I'm just trying to think of an interesting silhouette for an interesting shape. Now I'll have one long one dragging out back here. So remember they're connecting to the uh, to the body up top. But yeah, you, know, you can have these yeah, you know, this rhythm here bouncing like that against a straight line for the bottom. You know, it kinda just makes it makes it look interesting. Shape contrast. Give this pupil here. A little bit of shine. Another cartoon shorthand right there. You know, you just add like a a little white shape to the uh, to the pupil, and uh, everybody knows what it is. You could go in with more detail if you wanted to get more interesting with it. You know, look at what an actual eye looks like would be a good start. You know, I try to put those parts into it and make sure it all all fits in. And then, you know, an actual octopus would have the, the suction cups on the bottom. Just hinting at them a little bit because I don't feel like drawing them all. Like scales, you don't draw, you know, unless you're doing a photorealistic painting, you don't need to draw every single scale. You just go, uh, you know, little clusters. I like to add some lines on the surface just to kind of show a little bit of roundness to the object. Also separates it from the background a little bit, which is nice. Yeah, so you have like a big open area here with, you know, very little texture to it. Um, yeah, you have the, the character with all the texture on the inside of them. And then I'm just going to quick sketch this guy in. So I'm still, even though I'm sketching it quick, I'm still thinking of this as a as a three-dimensional object. Yeah, still thinking of it as a uh, as an eyeball. Um, if you have multiple characters uh, standing, you know, in the same same scene, and you're doing these little bits of shorthand like that, you want to make sure the light source. You know, you're 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 still paying attention to where the light source is because. You know, you don't want the light coming from the left of one character and then the right of another. You know, unless you have multiple light sources, you know, and you're paying attention to that, it can just kind of look a little sloppy if somebody's paying attention. Big caveat there, if someone's paying attention. <laughs> Blazing Sketchbook has almost used up an entire pencil while uh, while watching something that like you know motivate you know when I when I can't think of uh, something to draw I was like just watching somebody else draw it's like uh, you know really kind of makes it you know you, you watch somebody else draw and you go yeah I, that looks easy that's easy enough you start doing it that's a lot of pencil.
<laughs> yeah, one whole pencil in a sitting, that's pretty good, unless you're like, unless you have, uh, you know, one of these things and you like, you shave half your pencil off every time you uh, go to sharpen it because it's just fun to use. Waiting for the battery to die on this uh, this stylus. The uh, Apple got rid of the rid of the warning. So now I'll just be in the middle of a sketch, and then uh, pencil dies, and then you have to take a break. Which can be good, can be bad. Yeah, you get five hours in on a, on a fifteen. 15 hour drawing. Yeah, sometimes you kind of need to be reminded to take a break, so it's kind of nice to have to recharge things. Carrying the same texture over. Give this guy some some markings on him. Carry those markings around the around the shape so you know think about how it how it curves in space. that texture follow the uh, follow the surface so if I was going to add some uh, I was going to add some uh, some value into this and then uh, I think I'm going to call it quits let's see so I'll drop down to a gray so I'll get like a just like a mid-tone here just to kind of set the set the scene So I've created another layer under my under my line art. Actually, let me uh, drop these down to black. I have a tendency to draw in red because I uh, like animators, and that's what they all do. Do, and I thought I wanted it to be cool. So I'll take like a like a darker shape. So I want this character and this character to stand out. I have this mid-tone, so I think I'm going to uh, just drop a just drop a dark dark shape over this guy here. And just paint through there it is. So I'm painting from from back to front, like back back layer, furthest most layer, all the way to the to the closest layer. And just very little, uh, little rendering on this one. But good advice from uh, the uh, painter that I, that I know. You start with a, uh, start with a bigger brush than you need, than you think you need. Um, and then uh, try to simplify it as much as you can. I kind of want this to fade back a little bit further. And then I'm going to pull real bright white because I want you to look at this guy's face. Look at his eyes. He's the captain now. Now I'll probably put a little bit of a little bit of shine on him. Make them look greasy, real greasy. Too much, still too much, maybe just enough. It's kind of chaos. down those highlights a little bit. It's too distracting. Sample the color from if it wants to work. There we go. A little bit for the brow.
And then uh, probably darken this whole thing up because I'm just going to do this real simple. And I'm just going to make this character and that guy just big, almost white shapes. Just so they stand out against the background. And sometimes this is how I think through, like, when I do, like, more complicated colors. You know, when I'm coloring a page, I like to just try to figure out, you know, who's in front. You know, what's standing out, what's not standing out. You know, just so I can kind of plan, plan the scene in layers. And then this little bit of contrast here is going to make her stand out nicely against the against that big ominous dark shape here. I'll do this in some uh, chat here. <laughs> some fishy humor going on. Oh no, I've I've set off an entire uh, an entire string of uh, of octopus fish puns. Seems like a seems like a good time to abandon abandon the chat. Call it quits before this gets out of hand. Before it gets out of tentacle. And then sign it because you're a narcissist and you sign everything. There's an octop. There's a uh, scuba diver. Try to get it in focus. Looks great. This is, uh, Ken Eatsonator. I'm, uh, I gotta figure out a better system for the chat. I, uh, trying to test my eyesight now, and it's getting harder and harder to read the more I stare at a screen, but thanks, uh, thanks everybody for watching. I think, uh, I think I'm gonna end it right there, and, uh, I'll, uh, follow me. Uh, follow my uh, Instagram, and I'll make sure to post post there when the uh, when I'm doing the next one. Um, there will be more, uh, but I don't know when. I'm going to jump around a lot and see uh, see if um, see if uh, see what time people are uh, people are able to watch. But uh, put a link to some of my comics in the uh, in this description or about page wherever it is I'm still learning how to use twitch but um, I don't think I have anything to say I think I'm just rambling Let me read a couple extra look at all these comments look forward to the next one definitely stop by I'll uh, try to suggest suggest when you think a good time would be and I'll try it out if I can um, do my work for me, but, uh, yeah, thanks for coming, I'm gonna, there's a little animation I have for the, uh, for the end here, I'm excited to show it, I don't know if, how many people got to see the, the one of the blob, but you can go see it on the, uh, when I upload it to YouTube, but, this has been an episode of Keith Hershaft's Midnight, Midnight Cartoon, Cartoon Program. 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 entertain myself <laughs> thanks for watching Oops. Ah, that would have been cool if I hit the button and it worked uh, let's try it again <laughs>